Welcome to Just Blazer, and today I'm introducing another series of videos called Blazer Interviews. Now, Blazer Interviews is all about interview questions related to Blazer that you may encounter when you are gonna go do your interviews. So this is kind of like a bit of a hybrid of a technical video and my non-technical videos. You will get technical knowledge out of it, but there aren't really that much programming in here. I'll save that for the project videos. Uh, later, now we got that out of the way, let's discuss Blazor interviews. So Blazor interviews, when you are uh, applying for a Blazor project, most likely they're going to be asking you general C sharp questions in the interview. I'm not going to lie. The reason for that is because C sharp is what uh, you need to code for Blazor and for the backend that they're most likely going to use. So knowing that is far more important than knowing specific Blazor things. However, they will ask you Blazor questions, just like let's say you were going for a Razor project interview you will be asked the same thing. C-sharp questions, but they'll ask you specific questions on Razor itself. This is Blazor. They're going to ask you specific question on Blazor. So this video is about the component life cycle. The component life cycle is a very important thing that they will ask you about because it is the backbone of every component you're ever going to make. And components are the backbone of the Blazor language in general. So understanding how the life cycle interacts with your application is going to be fundamental in you proving that you actually know what you're doing. So with that in mind, we're going to go over four common questions that I might ask you involving the component lifecycle. Other videos here will go over um, other pieces of Blazor and what common questions it ask for that. However, I believe the lifecycle components are probably the most important ones that they'll ask you because not only is it very specific, but it is also something that you have to know in order to use components uh, correctly. So let's go over it. So one of the first and most general questions I'll ask you involving the lifecycle components is what is a lifecycle component in Blazor? How do they work? What do they do? What is it specifically? So in this case, we're going to be answering the general question of what is a lifecycle component? And that is virtual methods that affect the behavior of a component. So that's the simple answer. And then if they want to ask you, can you give you a little bit more details? You'll answer something like, uh, depending on the method, these are virtual methods that are called upon in different times of the components rendering. So whether it's during the render or after the render, they'll change the behavior of this component, something wrong, something like that. So the next question is going to be, what are the lifecycle components? Now there are nine of them that you should remember. There's actually 11, but nine, the nine I'm going to describe to you are the most common ones you're going to be using for your application, 99% uh, of the time. So you're going to have to know what these are. They might ask you specifically, which one is which. So whichever the case, I'm going to go over the nine of them and give you a brief description of, you know, what they are and what they do. So the first one's going to be set parameter async. The set parameter async method is called first, the very first thing that's called. Now this method is called when your component is initialized. And what it does is it sets the parameters from the parent that your component is in, if there are any parameters to be set. If there are, then this, uh, this is also a method you could use in order to initialize certain you know, data calls if you need to. However, I personally prefer to do that in the next method, which is a pair of methods. Uh, before I get to the next one, I'm going to explain that some of these components come in a pair of methods, uh, a synchronous version and an asynchronous version. So that means that one of them is a synchronous call. One of them is an async call. They both do the same thing, except they do it at different times, basically. So the next one is going to be uninitialized and uninitialized async. They do the same thing. Just one is an async, one is not. Uninitialized and uninitialized async is similar to set parameter async. It happens after it, but it happens during the initialization of the component and only happens the one time that the component is initialized. So it's it also it doesn't set the parameters from the parent. This comes afterwards, but now you have access to the state of the component. That's the difference between the two. So if they ever ask you something that is the difference between the set parameter async and the uninitialized. The difference is that the first one, the on the set parameter, does not have access to the state of the component, but the uninitialized does. So that's why I also recommend you doing your data calls in the uninitialized. Usually, that's a typical default where you're going to do that. The next one is going to be the on parameter set and the on parameter set async. So the on parameter set and on parameter set async are. So after the on initialized, uh, either the async or the non async comes on parameter set or on parameter set async. Either one, what this does is checks to make sure that the parameters that were set from the first method are different or not. And if they're not different, then nothing changes for this. This doesn't get triggered if it if they are different, then this will get triggered. That's the difference between the two. So the next method that you should know is the state has changed method. Now what this does is it tells, uh, it sets a flag for the component that says that something has changed within it. Uh, so it can re-render again. So what does that mean? It means that 
if you're having something that's constantly changing, let's say a timer, you need to have this flag set so that it could constantly update the component to be re-rendered. If not, then you will have your value being changed in the background, but the component rendering will not happen and you will not see a change on the page. This is similar to, let's say you want to have an active user count that might change constantly, but there's only one component there. And then the component will know whether or not to be rendered unless it knows it has to through this method. That's what status change does. Status has changed. By the, way. the next method that you should know is the should render method. Now this one, basically you tell the component whether or not it is going to render according to certain conditions. So all from the, except for the first time when you are rendering the component, you can tell it to re-render again or not, depending on whatever it is that you want. So this is useful when you are trying to optimize your component. So that doesn't re-render on instances where the output is the same as whatever you have on the screen. Let's say that you have like a calculator app and you get two plus two equals four or whatever the output is. If the output is going to be the exact same thing that you already had before, then you may want to activate the should render and set it to false. So that you don't have to keep re-rendering the component because your output doesn't change, even though you are making changes to variables. So, uh, you know, I don't know if that's a good or bad example, but that's a way to understand why would you use a should render method. It's basically to optimize your component in case the outputs are the same and you don't want to keep re-rendering them um, in that case. So on to the next. So the final method that we're going to talk about is the on after or on after render async lifecycle method. Now this happens last. This is the final method of the lifecycle components. And what this does is that it tells the, well, it basically says that do something right after the component's done rendering. So if you need to change a value and you want to see it on the component, don't do it here because you're not going to see it. What this is useful for is to make sure that you've guaranteed that the HTML and everything that is that you're creating has already been loaded on screen so that it could be used by, let's say, a third party library like a JavaScript library because they need to know what's on screen. They can't just, you know, they can't guess. So you have to guarantee that everything that you have already loaded up on screen is there. And that's the whole point of the on after render and or the on after render async. So that is why the final method that you should learn is this one. And this comes last. So hopefully this gives you a brief explanation of how these methods work and exactly, you know, how to use them effectively. This will come up in a different question. I'm going to put to you in this video. But until then, if you are given these as interview questions, you'll have a greater knowledge of what they do and what they're supposed to do or what they are supposed to be used for. So that last question, I went over the life cycles in order of how they appear within the component or when they get called. So this is actually the next question is what is the order of these life cycle components? So on screen, this should be like a graph that will tell you the order of it. And that starts with set parameter async, then on initialize or on initialize async, then on parameter set or on parameter set async status changed, then should render. And then whether or not that's true or false, you get to the on after render or on after render async. And if it's false then you won't hit there just in case that's not clear, but that's essentially the order of what you will encounter in for blazer components and their life cycle. There are more than this, but these are the most important ones. The final question is a bit of a rehash of the second question, except it's far more specific because if I were to give you an interview question and I wanted just to be the, the worst interviewer ever, and I wanted to give you this, the hardest question ever, I would give you something like name a use for the on after render should render or, and status change, depending on how my mood is. I might give you all three. I might just give you one either way. They'll ask you a use case for the harder methods to do. It's really easy to know when set parameter is going to be called. It gets called regardless what you want and it's in the name, what it does on initialize is basically where you will initialize the values and you have this access to the state of things. And then on parameter set or on parameter set async is what happens when um, you do a check for the change of the parameters, but not very hard to, to figure out what they do based on what they are. However, on after render should render and status change when you are asked for a use case is a little bit more different. So let's go over with probably the most, uh, the one that you might flub on the most likely is going to be the should render should render is something that you will use for optimization of your components so that you don't re render something that has the same output that the user sees. This will save you computations and this will make your app a lot smoother for the user experience. Next one is going to be state has changed. State has changed is probably the easier one to answer because if you have something that has changed, but your components already rendered, you want to re-render it. So that's basically it. The last one is on after render mostly used. If you absolutely need access to the HTML of the page guaranteed. So for third party libraries and stuff like that, that's what that's used for. Welcome to the secret number five question. I know I said four in the beginning, but we're going to go with fifth. 
if this is the question that if I wanted to just stump you, if I just hated you and I wanted you to fail this interview, I would ask you this particular question. And I'm glad you stayed to the end because this question will destroy people. And the question is name a life cycle method that only happens the first time and name a life cycle method that only happens after the first time. AK after the first render. So how would you answer this? Well, the uninitialized async and uninitialized question I mean, method only happens the first time a component is rendered. While the should render lifecycle method only happens after the first render. So these are the special kind of methods that Blazor has. So just remember them. And remember, if they asked you this question, they didn't like you and they want to fail you because this would stump anyone. You will get confused or whatever. But just remember, uninitialized happens once the first time should render happens after the first time. And I think with that, you're good. These, this is just a common questions that you, they'll probably ask you about lifecycle components. There's a bunch of stuff they will ask you about blazer. And if they really hate you, they'll ask you some real tricky stuff like that last one. But when it comes to blazer interviews, most likely they'll ask you C sharp general questions because blazer is C sharp and they'll probably save some of the blazer questions in there for the most important things like the lifecycle components. But I could do more videos of this if you want, if you like these interview, uh, question videos. I'll make more of them. Just let me know you like them, like and subscribe. If you have any specific questions you want to ask me, or if you want to make a video, uh, want me to make a video about it, let me know. Projects are still in the works. Trust me, it just takes a lot longer to do than these kinds of videos. So bear with me. I'm getting out these projects, and then we'll grow more in depth in lifecycle components in the future on an actual, you know, programming IDE, all that good stuff. So until next time, just Blazers out. Good luck with y'all. Thank you.